Access to quality online learning is an important step in helping people future proof their skill and seeking new opportunities for growth and development. Good morning and warm welcome to our delegates present virtually and today's first speaker, a renowned academician, administrator, and researcher, Dr. V. Patsarthi. I, Dr. Dhanashri Mai, feel privileged to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Parth Sarthi, Professor, Department of Pharmacy, Director, Center of Cell Biology and Drug Discovery, Annamalai University. Sir has completed his graduation and post-graduation from Annamalai University and he's completed his doctorate in Molecular Biology from University of Sheffield, England, UK and post-doctorate from Department of Cancer Immunology, Dona Fiber University, Harvard University, USA. Sir has used 31 years of experience in teaching and research. He has joined Annamalai University in 1992. Currently, he is working as professor in Department of Pharmacy, Annamalai University, and also shouldering an another responsibility as director of Center of Cell Biology, Drug Discovery, Faculty of Engineering and Technology, Annamalai University, from 2018. During his professional career, he is also handling various responsibilities, like he is a member, life member of International Brain Research Organization, a member of an associate member of International Headache uh, Society UK, life member of Indian Society for Technical Education. He is an expert committee member in AICT, New Delhi, and also expert committee member in Center of Research and Development, Annamala University. Sir is a life member of State Pharmacy Council, Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu State. He is an active researcher, and uh, the research is shown by as 42 students has awarded MPhil, MA and MSc degree under him. 13 students has completed their PhD under him and four are pursuing. He has conducted one national and three international conferences, also conducted six seminar and one workshop. Sir has got various fellowship. I'm mentioning few of them. Sir has got a fellowship uh, for his PhD work by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Uh, he is one of the nominee to the World Health Organization from India, which is uh, the fellowship which is received from Government of India in 2011. He is also a recipient of prestigious World Health Organization fellowship at Dana Fiber Cancer University, uh, Institute, Howard Medical University, USA in 2011 for its postdoctoral research. He is also a recipient of prestigious Ford Foundation International Fellowship in USA to carry out PhD work in University of Sheffield, UK in 2002. Sir also received various awards. The first foremost award is Best Teacher Award from Rotary International in 2022. Outstanding Research Award Rotary International Midtown Chidambaram in 2012. Dr. P. V. Vidyanathan, former Vice Chancellor, Edelment Award for publication in immunology in 2006. He is doing vast research. The outcome of that research is 75 publications in international journal. Three books and book chapters are published. He has presented almost 24 papers in conference. He has also submitted two patents. The grants which is received by Sir is very huge. Around 7.2 crores grant is received till now. I'm mentioning few of them here. He has received an research grant as a coordinator in RUSA 2.0, which is almost the worth of 5 crore for carrying out a research in developing novel anti-cancer agent. The second grant which is received by Sir is uh, of worth 
1.2 crore for a research project on development of potential microbiology metabolites library from deep sea a collaborative research under deep ocean mission which is carried out by ministry of earth science government of india then sir also received a grant of 83 lakh as an coordinator for dst fist grant in the period of 2016 to 21 which is given by department of science and technology government of india to step up a cell culture facility at the department of pharmacy annamala university sir received two research grant in 2000 uh, in the period of 2012 to 15 as an co investigator under ugc major project one project is under crystallization and pharmacological evaluation of isolated compounds isolated compounds the grant worth is 6.97 lakh and second grant as a major research project for population pharmacokinetic of the drugs for treatment of tuberculosis which is having 5 lakhs so also received a grant as a co investigator from icmr which is worth of 6 lakh so these are the few mentioning i am mentioning a few grants which is received by the sir so let's take an advantage of his expertise on grant and proposal writing i welcome you sir and also request you to start your session okay ma'am very good morning to all of you good morning uh, first sir first of all i wish to uh, wish to express my sincere thanks i first of all i wish to express my sincere thanks to the uh, the organizers of this uh, fdf program conducted by the gosavi institute of uh, uh, education pharmaceutical sciences and uh, air education um i hope my presentation will be more useful to the audience uh, this is uh, related to uh, various fund the advancement in pharmaceutical research and the various funding agencies what are the ethics to be for while writing grants while we are executing the experiments uh, sir can you okay. are you hearing sir hari okay or i am sharing the full screen now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you seeing now? Full screen. Are you seeing the full screen now? Hello. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you can, can continue. continue. Hello. Hello. Are you seeing the full screen now? Are you seeing yes, the full sir, screen? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. My today's uh, topic of presentation: recent advancement in pharmaceuticals research uh, fundings and uh, ethics to be followed for this research. The contents of this presentation: recent advancement in pharmaceuticals, role of academia and industries in new drug development. that this to be followed for new drug development funding to carry out cutting edge research international grants fellowships to carry out advanced research initially i'll start with the advancement in pharmaceuticals and uh, role of academics in reason advancement in pharmaceuticals very recently academics are playing a very important role for finding a new solution to treat various elements diseases and in addition to the academics the industry is also playing a pivotal role in finding a new drug molecule to treat various new diseases and existing diseases first of all i will cover with the role of academics in recent advancement in pharmaceuticals raising academic contributions in drug development Development is achieved by conducting a cutting-edge research, which involves various scientific knowledges about disease and new technologies to discover a drug to address the social issues. It is no surprise that academic investigators are now playing a key role in drug development. Hence, academia is a conscious engine of innovations. several drug discoveries were happened in academic centers rather than industry 
for an example academic investigators can research to find a new drug candidate to target a receptor of scientific interest without necessarily considering the issues related to the market share or profitability but in the industry is finding out a new drug but it is purely the commercial and interest commercial and the profits so now we are governing this role of industries in recent advancement in pharmaceuticals in recent years pharmaceutical industries also are playing a important role to find out the new drug molecule and are exhibiting breaking solutions for various health challenges in addition to the academic institutions industries also are playing an important role sometimes industries in collaboration with the academic institutions and finding the new solutions for various disease a new drug development this presentation exposes some of the most not noteworthy recent advancement in pharmaceuticals and their potential impact on the future of medicine the first um, important thing is the vaccines the rapid development and deployment of mrna vaccines mark a significant milestone in fight against various infectious disease very recently pfizer bionet bionetech and uh, moderna covid-19 vaccines are becoming very popular to battle against uh, covid-19 it's a uh, mrna rna based uh, uh, vaccines we are proud to say that india is also made a vaccine it's a um, covaxin it's a india's first indigenous covid-19 vaccine developed by bharat batter in collaboration with icmr this approach allows the synthesis of various viral products within the body triggering and robust immune systems beyond beyond covid-19 mrna virus vaccines holds a promise for for addressing wide range of infectious diseases and even certain types of cancers currently the gene therapy is becoming a very popular and emerged as a ground breaking field in pharmaceuticals offering potential cures for genetic disorders that were once considered incurable for example lastuna uh, which is um, uh, for its fda approved gene therapy for rare form of inherited blindness the therapy introduces a functional copy of defective gene restoring vision in patients the artificial intelligence is a very important tool now in drug discovery process advancement in artificial intelligence and machine learning have revolutionized the drug discovery process artificial intelligence algorithms analyze vast databases to identify potential drug candidates predict the efficacy and optimize drug development timelines this is not only accelerate the drug discovery process this is in artificial intelligence uh, applications in drug discovery reduces the cost of the drug discovery process and increases the success rate of the drug in clinical trials personalized medicine this approach will reduce adverse reactions associated with this drug molecule the era of one size fits all machine medicines is giving a way to personalized medicine tailoring treatments based on individual's genetic environment and lifestyle factors so personalized medicines were be developed based on the individual genetic characters environmental factors and lifestyle factors it will be vary from individual to individual advancement in genomics biomarker identifications and diagnostics have paved the way for more precise and effective therapies targeted therapies such as herceptin for breast cancer and imatinib mesilate for leukemia exemplify the success of personalized medicines in improving treatment outcomes and minimizing side effects 3d printing in pharmaceuticals is another advancement in uh, uh, recent pharmaceutical uh, um, development the integration of 3d printing technology in pharmaceutical has opened up new possibility for drug manufacturing 
customization, precise the dosing, and individualized drug delivery system, which will enhance patient's compliance and overall treatment efficacy. 3D cell culture technique. The use of 3D modeling provides more accurate results than traditional 2D methods mimicking cell-to-cell -cell interactions. The pharmaceuticals are currently in the process of developing 3D cell structure system to offer better personalized medicine with reduced or no adverse effects. Immunotherapy for many diseases, very especially for cancer, it's a emerging now. Immunotherapy is emerged as a game changer in treatment of cancer. Checkpoint inhibitors, CAR T cell therapies, and cancer vaccines haunts the body's immune system to target and eliminate cancer cells. This is a very recent approach. It could uh, provide challenges, whatever the things we are going to face that will be easily eliminated using this technology. These therapies have demonstrated remarkable success in treating various cancers, providing a new hope with the previously untreatable conditions. The ethics to be followed when we are going for recent advancement in pharmaceutical and any other new discovery. So the pharmaceutical industries are making a new drug and it's uh, they are playing a real role for the pharmaceutical uh, product manual, medical advancement, besides facing surgicals and flashpoints they are facing, right, pricing practices, balancing profits and accessibility. When the drug launched into the market, the pharmaceutical companies may aim to recover the R&D cost involved in this manufacturing of or discovery of new medicines and generate profits. On the other hand, Sky high price, sometimes monopoly, they developed a new molecule, patented, that the cost of this drug will be fixed by the company. It will be a sky high price, which cannot be affordable by a needy people. So this is, a, at the time this pricing, the pharmaceutical industry should follow certain ethics to make this product to available to the needy people. Clinical trials and patient safety. The pharmaceutical industries, after they discover the drug, it will go for this preclinical studies. After that, it should go for the clinical studies. That the proper ethics to be followed for clinical trials. And the patient safety should be considered as a prime important. Ensuring these ethical standards, the road to market approval is paved with the clinical trials. But these trials have their own set of ethical challenges from informed consent to the selection of a trial subjects. The informed consent before part, take part in this uh, clinical trial, participants must fully understand the risk involved in this study. Failing to obtain the informed consent is not a justice. It's just ethically unsound. It's a violations of basic human rights. The regulatory guidelines such as OECD for toxicity study, International Council for Harmonization and WHO guidelines, everything followed while the drug is tested either in the animals or in the human study for the benefit of this. From this health point, the health authorities like FDA help to enforce ethical standards in clinical trials, safeguard the well-being of participants. Passion protections and generic medicines. So it's another ethics to be followed, balancing innovation and uh, affordability. Patients law exists in patients law exists to protect innovations, but they also lead to monopolies that can price essential drug out of reach of many patients. The controversy over the patient's exclusivity, while patients reward innovations. There can be a roadblock to accessibility, especially in developing countries. Balance between the innovations and affordability is a subject of ongoing debate. So the meaning of this um, controversy over patent uh, exclusivity, 
if the drug is discovered in developed country the drug will be patented the innovations will be reserved in that particular country but what the current uh, situation many countries were requesting uh, the developed countries whatever the discoveries were made the discoveries please go to the developing countries at that time you should not see the cost and the profit and other things this is a uh, one of the ethical violations so one side the people will be happy another side the people will be unhappy because they can't afford that particular drug even they can obtain the drug it will be of higher cost so if you want to do this cutting edge research advancement pharmaceuticals development new drug discovery there is a need of research funding so government all over this world all the governments are supporting lot of research by offering the research funding in our country also is providing lot of funds to carry out the cutting edge research the successful execution of successful execution of a research project not only depends upon the effort of the researcher but is purely based on the available infrastructure to conduct the research this is a major problem everywhere so if we want to establish infrastructure good infrastructure to conduct a good research without the research funding from the government agencies and other pharmaceutical industries is not at all possible this research funding is essential to meet the expenses on salary of the researchers the researcher may be a project associate project fellow project assistant and uh, the materials involved in this uh, study inclusive of chemicals and other accessories to meet these requirements a research funding is very essential this presentation is also aimed to give overview of various funding agencies and opportunities when we go for writing a grant proposal the components of the grant proposal is very very important an ideal proposal contain project summary main objectives it should be of four to five points expected outcome of the proposal the simply we cannot get the project proposals is very very essential so that the origin of proposals also very very important while we are making a grant proposal if the study is a concern to disease pathophysiology pathways current treatment options how best your proposed idea to treat a particular disease at the time the weightage will be given for grants the review status of the research and development in the subject there will be a international status and the national status of the particular project proposal if the the project proposal is uh, internationally very useful or it's having national importance based on that that weightage of the uh, marks will be given for this proposal based on based on that the grant will be provided the importance of the project uh, pro proposal is the um, current status current status of the uh, condition particular disease say say example if anyone is developing any vaccines for this cancer or anything that importance will be given for the particular pro project proposal and while they are writing the proposal they have to write the proposal in phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 the phase 1 this will be a mostly first year and phase 2 will be a second year and phase phase 3 will be third year and um, if you, the research is involves that is a manpower why the manpower is needed what the manpower either the phd student or post doctoral researchers or uh, technical assistant or project assistant that justification you have to give what is the workload of that particular manpower what will be the salary for them everything should be calculated if the suit, the project is very suitable and meets a major national uh, initiatives surely the government will offer the grant to the particular grant right to submitted persons and uh, this project proposal should consisting of references up to the recent so we were preparing a budget uh, i would say what the name of the institute what is the cost involved for this uh, manpower consumables travel equipments contingencies 
overhead charges that is the um, charges will be given to the institute for our institute of uh, meeting the expenditures concerning either the power water and other establishment charge altogether the total will be grant given to the government agencies or private agencies for the funding and if the project is considered as a worth and meet the future challenges of our countries or it's a globally it will be useful then the budget will be considered and the grant will be released and this is a various budget breakup and uh, what is the probability to get a grant after the careful scrutiny of the project proposal by the expert committee constituted by the funding agency or uh, mostly that the funding agencies will be considered the high level people like uh, personalities like vice chancellors or scientists of the various uh, departments college professors and very very other researchers even industrial experts also will, will be involved in this committee the principal investigators uh, will be asked for an interview or presentation if the grant proposal first phase the first round they have selected the principal investigator will be called for an interview or personal presentations in any one of the locations in india and uh, the committee is satisfied the proposal uh, based on the proposal's novelty deliverable and the budget of the project the grant will be approved and it will be released various funding agencies for research and development in india university grant commissions previously ugc have given a huge funding currently ugc is uh, not funding anymore and it's um, uh, um, uh, we are hoping that soon it will be give that's the funding and the indian council of medical research department of science and technology biotechnology industry research assistant council bayrak uh this is bayrak is meant for uh, industry and uh, institute it can form uh, uh, collaborations to go for a uh, new innovations is a bayrak is a huge grant they are giving biotechnology industry assistant a research assistance council council of scientific and industrial research uh, department of ayurvedic yoga and naturopathy you know ayush department of biotechnology technology information forecasting and assessment council scientific and engineering serb uh, board and the first we will talk about the university grant commission uh, it's um, funding this uh, various uh, projects in humanities social sciences languages literature pure science engineering technology pharmacy medical sciences agriculture sciences environment biotechnology stress management the eligibility criteria for ugc funding uh, it's offering two types of uh, funding one is major grants major research grants mrp another one is minor research grant the faculty members who are regular are regularly appointed and are working in the following institutions like the national institutes and the central universities state universities uh, they are eligible to apply for this grants uh, deemed to be universities under the section 3 of the ugc act 1956 they having valid accreditation from the nac they also can apply for this ugc funding the tenure of this fundings normally 2 to 3 years the how many numbers of the fellowships will be given it's uh, nearly 200 or more depending upon the financial status it will be decided by the commissions the financial assistance it will be given for this uh, vary from uh, schemes to scheme it will be quantum of the support under the scheme is uh, nearly 10 lakhs the grant can be utilized for the purchase of minor equipments consumable contingencies field work travel etc and it's also the grant cannot be used for the international travel and the quantum of the fund and these heads can be decided by the recipients depending on his needs the grants once the grant is approved by the agency within the 3 months from the date of the approval the grant will be transferred to the particular institutes in some special circumstances dual approval from ugc activation period of the may be extended for a minimum maximum period of up to 6 months from the date of issue of the award next uh, funding agency 
is a very promising funding agency in our country concerning to health related studies indian council of medical research indian council of medical research icmr provides financial assistance for indian scientists working outside of icmr institutes to conduct research in the field of uh, medicine public health allied disciplines and aim to improving the health of indians under the extramural research program it's called the erp so this icmr is a funding their own uh, research institutes as a leprosy research in national institute of leprosy national institute of tb national institute of filariasis they have got several icmr institutes and this icmr is a funding their own institute as well as it's a funding to the outside of the institutes to meet the to develop the drug molecule to meet the future challenges of our country in the general guidelines for various extramural research programs for the formulations review mechanism and operations of the projects by the icmr have been formulated this extramurals of uh, grants are uh, three types one is investigator initiated research proposal is a small grant investigator initiated research proposal intermediate grant and is another grant for centers for advanced research this uh, investigator initiated initiated research proposal is a small grant it is um, it should be achieve specific and measurable objectives and should be in line with the icmr priorities the small grant project project should be well circumscribed and time bound the multiple multiple multidisciplinary projects which aim to find solution to priority disease and the conditions will receive preference for funding the funding uh, for this project is uh, up to 2 crores per project for the entire duration is a investigator initiated research proposal here this purpose is the investigator initiate intermediate grant projects are expected to result in a finding solution to priority health problems of our country the project should lead to significant contributions in generating effective interventions for the prevention diagnosis treatment and the rehabilitation of the disease conditions potential deliverables from this project should be include patent commercial products or in impactful publications to influence clinical or public health practice funding is between 2 to 8 crores for the entire duration duration of the project will be 4 years this is inclusive of 6 months each for the preparatory and the post project activities this is a grand center for advanced research the icmr is funding to create a new research center they are funding the for this establishment of center to carry out cutting edge research on health related study to meet our country's needs this aim of this uh, grant is to conduct cutting edge research that help in solving an important health care problem by a research team it can be a single or multiple linked research project with a clear uh, deliverable so it's uh, they are asking to form a a um, group of collaborators between within the institutes outside of the institute uh, it will be more useful uh, to attract these types of uh, grants <laughs> priorities disease or conditions the research team planning to undertake a studies in finding a solution for the prevention screening diagnosis and treatment of or rehabilitation of the disease or conditions will receive preference to fund for a car center for advanced research the priority diseases or conditions will identified by the icmr through an open call for proposals the funding for this uh, uh, under this head is is nearly 15 crores per uh, uh, duration of the project is 5 uh, years department of science science and technology it's um, giving Department of Science and Technology is offering huge funding and it's playing a very important role in promoting science and technology in India. 
the development department covers a broad spectrum of activities from advanced research and technology development to meet the practical needs of the general public skill and the technology enhancement who can apply this dst projects scientists engineers medical professionals technologists working in iits national institutes autonomous bodies aided institutes universities and other central or state governments r and d institutions laboratory the duration of this dst projects may be normally 2 to 3 years depending upon the instruments and technologies to be developed the implementation of the project is monitored regularly by the dst and um, the expert committee is constituted by the dsts monitoring is done normally four times a year dst national facility this is one, only the few uh, funding will be given one or two or three or four uh, national funding projects uh, will be offered to the uh, very elite institutes or any other institutes are doing a very outstanding researches this fund of maximum of 60 crores our research group submitted a proposal entitled nanobiological and nano delivery systems in 2018 to tst and a national facility for financial support to carry out the research at the center for cell biology and drug discovery in Amla university the project was technology development transfer divisions and drug and pharmaceutical research program scheme and we have submitted the projects to develop nano biologicals to treat cancer but we were not successful in this mission uh, one project was sanctioned to the another institutes so the the various startup research grants were offered by the government agencies and the startup research grants aims to assist researchers in initiating their research careers in new institutions the grant is to meant to enable researchers working in frontier areas of uh, uh, science and tech engineering to establish themselves and uh, move into the mainstream core research grant. The eligibility for these uh, grants, the applicant, sh applicant should be a PhD, MD or MS, MDS, MBSc degree holders, must be working in, a, in the institute, academic institute on a regular basis. And uh, the duration of the project is uh, two years. This is uh, the new newcomers or new startup people. Uh, this project is uh, given to initiate the research potential. Biotechnology Industry Research Assistant Council. This uh, this council is for the uh, promoting potential entrepreneurs from the academia, startups, or an incubate and the eligibility for these uh, grants a new startup company would be eligible if it is within the three years of incorporation this is subject to the condition that the new startup company would be working in a different line of biotech business any individuals working in a private company can also apply for this uh, biotechnology industry research assistant council for the grant and if the project is worth to receive the grant. And another thing is biotechnology ignition grant. Uh, this scheme is uh, granting aid funding to support individuals and startups in the field of biotechnology. And uh, this uh, biotechnology ignition grant invests the ideas that have clear potential to translate into commercial products and technology. If anyone is having a clear cut idea that will be have the possibility to go for the commercialization that per step, the type of projects uh, can easily attract this grant this grant value is up to 50 lakhs and the grant period is 18 months council of scientific and industrial research csir it's uh, funding this uh, research of basic particularly basic science they are funding science and technology, including agriculture, engineering, and medicine. Uh, this assistance is provided uh, to the professors, experts, and the experts who are working in the industries, uh, or institutes, and um, national institutes on regular employment basis. IIDs and, and postgraduate institutions are, and uh, CSR institutions have the better chance to get these types of grants.
the tenure of this csr scheme is normally 3 years or less as asked by the investigators extension beyond 3 years is also may be considered in some cases if the project is going in a correct path and there will be a, some outcome this better deliverable i based on that that uh, committee will give this extension of the project after 3 years also the after the 3 years maximum limit for this extension is 2 years this ayush currently ayush is funding huge amount for this research in ayurveda yoga naturopathy inani siddha and homeopathy it fund for the research and training program the currently budgetary ceiling is 3 crores 6 crores per uh, one scheme is called ai ach aci hr with an initial period of 3 years which can be extendable up to 10 crores for a period of 5 years duration of the project will be normally 3 years and later it can be extended for another 5 years department of biotechnology department of biotechnology the ministry of science and technology oversees the development and the commercialization of modern biology and biotechnology products in the country funding the funding for uh, a period of 3 years and uh, the total cost of the project will be maximum of 60 lakhs and the, for a pilot project in case of the where the pa has no earlier experience of uh, societal projects or in case where the uh, steering committee recommends for a pilot stage project the project cost would be limited to 30 lakhs so normally it will be given the project for 60 years if the newcomers they cannot offer the 60 lakhs uh, and uh, they will offer this half of the amount to make them to equip themselves to future they can get this a huge next grant of 60 lakhs the duration of the project is 18 months or uh, 3 years at the maximum serb it's uh, it's also good funding agency and the scientific and engineering board and the science and engineering board a statutory body under the department of science and technology government of india it offers various grants like core research grant fund for industrial research engagement empower and equity opportunity for excellence in science serb power research grants international travel support scientific and useful profound research and advancement intensification of research in high priority areas startup research grants and state university research excellence grants so they are reservedly giving um, various uh, grants the scheme is open to uh, indian nationals only so he can you can i uh, see this word the scheme is open to indian nationals only in this projects any foreigners cannot collaborate applicant applicants should have phd degree in the area of science and engineering from the recognized institution in india applicants must hold a permanent position in any indian research and academic institution applicants have mbbs md degree or veterinary degree also can eligible to apply this uh, grants defense research and development organization drdo is excels and they are developing very novel things and they are also funding this uh, research in uh, pharmaceuticals as well as uh, new devices there is a mysore there is a center food uh, food and other uh, devices manufacturing the r&d centers of drdo they are funding this uh, projects related to pharmaceutical sciences drdo funds the research projects concerning to health such as development of technology for water purification drugs and chemicals to treat wounds due to amenuations food processing technology etc under these schemes grants are offered to indian academic institutions of national importance or reputations national science and technology centers research institution non profit professional societies performing advanced research acclaimed scientific attached to approved institutions um institutions ugc uh, aist or ministry of uh, higher education research and development so now we are going to discuss about various uh, funding opportunity for the phd uh, studies as well as fellowships within india and uh, outside of india 
uh, to carry out the cutting edge research. After completing a master degree, one of the options for a person to pursue a doctor, doctor of philosophy. Major constraint to the scholar is the financial support to carry out his, his or her PhD over a period of three to five years. Hence, uh, this presentation offers the details concerning to some of the popular PhD scholarships, fellowships in India that are known to offer <laughs> handsome amount to scholars, thus providing the asset free journey uh, in establishing your uh, career in research. There is a Prime Minister Fellowships for Dr. Research, the Ministry of Human Resource and uh, Development, Research, Human, the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India has launched a scholarship scheme to provide financial support to meritorious students going for a PhD offered to the candidates via Indian Institute of Science, IIT uh, corridors. Prime Minister Fellowship is one of the prestigious PhD fellowships in India. Under this scheme, the scholar gets a monthly stipend of nearly 70,000 for the first year, which is increased in increase to Indian rupees 80,000 per month during the fourth and fifth years of the program. These scholarships are offers every year, and the scholars from all, all universities in India can apply this scheme through the uh, through the official website. Another is a Fulbright Nehru Doctoral uh, Research Fellowship. This is another popular PhD scholarships in India um, and um, it uh, awarded to the scholars who have registered themselves for a PhD at any Indian universities. And these fellowships spanning over six to nine months are designed to help the students in advance the research in vast range of fields like sociology, public health, history, machine learning, etc. in the US. That is meaning that the students can be spend nearly six to nine months in abroad, particularly USA. It's one of the popular scholarship for Indians. It broadly covers the expenses related to the J-1 visa, accident sickness programs for exchanges, and monthly stipend, round trip economy, class air travel, other allowances, and modest affiliation fees. So various dates and uh, uh, times where these scholarships will be uh, announced. It's available in the websites. Another is Jawaharlal Nehru Memorial Fund scholarships. This scholarship is uh, uh, is another PhD scholarship offered to Indians as well as students of Asian countries. It provides selected candidates with the maintenance fees, including the tuition cost of the program, worth of eighteen thousand Indian rupees every month, as well as the contingency cost of guns, books, stationery. And it's worth of 15,000 every month. The eligible eligibility for Jawaharlal Nehru Memorial Fund scholarship is age limit is not less than uh, 35 years. And the first division postgraduate degree holder, this means that first class minimum of 60% in undergraduate and postgraduate level has to have applied uh, for a PhD program at a recognized university in India. They have to carry out full time PhD program. So like this, uh, various uh, fellowships are available. And um, for this, uh, Maulana Asad National Fellowship is also available. Uh, this is uh, provided by the Ministry of uh, Minority Affairs of the Government of India. This objective of this fellowship is to provide students from the minority communities with the financial assistance to pursue higher education, such as MPhil, PhD. The Maulana Asad National Fellowship can be availed by taking admission to any one of the recognized universities in the country. One of these lesser known PhD scholarship in India, it is awarded to those candidates whose family income not more than 6 lakhs per annum. Under this scheme, the scholars can get 28,000 per month for a period of 5 years. So, another DBD, JRF fellowships, IS fellowships, SARP agricultural fellowships, Swami Vivekananda single child scholarships, MHRD, Ministry of Human Resource Development, PhD Scholarship. So this is important dates and other things we can uh, visualize in this website. Another most important scholarship is um, World Health Organization Scholarships and Fellowships. It's uh, normally, it's uh, not a regular fellowship. The, if the ministry is the Ministry of Health and Family Services have got some surplus fund, they will, they can, at the time, they can nominate one person 
from our country to WHO. It's a very cumbersome. Uh, on the, many people will apply to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for the funding to carry out their advanced research in various uh, elite institutes uh, outside of India or within the India. At the time, the, uh, the scrutiny of the application is very stringent and the applications will be scrutinized and uh, recommended by the ACMR. Then the International Committee will be review that. Finally, that persons will be awarded to the World Health Organization Fellowship. It's a very prestigious. At the same time, it's a very cumbersome to get. So I am fortunate to get this World Health Organization Fellowship because I, my aim of my research is the deliverable. I am I'm working on this cancer immunology. I am planning to, I did my doctorate in, post doctorate in uh, uh, Harvard Medical School in USA. And um, uh, my expertise, whatever I am going to get from this uh, broad, that will be useful to set up a new facilities at the, our host institute, our uh, home country institute, and it will be meet the future challenges of our countries. Because of that, that conditions, I was selected for these fellowships. Another important uh, fellowships offered by the Indian government is the Commonwealth Scholarships and Fellowships. It is offered by Government of India to carry out uh, the PhD program uh, in UK in collaboration with the UK, uh, collaboration in UK. So it's a uh, participation countries are India and the UK. They will meet out the expenditure of the fellows to carry out this advanced research. Uh, various uh, contact proposals and um, um, everything's Ministry of uh, um, environment, forest, and other things are there. So, at this stage, I'm finishing my presentation. Uh, if any clarifications, please contact me now. Hello? Hello, sir? Yes, sir. Sir, you have given uh, extensive mm -hmm. uh, information about the grant and research proposal writing. Uh, I request delegates to put your question. So till now we have not yeah. received any question, but uh, we have received one comment. I would like to share that comment with you. Okay. Saraswati Pani, uh, Pani Grihini, she is saying that a very informative session. Uh, so she is also requesting you to share your slides as you have given very helpful information. Okay, madam. Uh, so we have got one question. The question is by uh, Deepesh. Sir, mm -hmm. how we can approach funding at master level? Sir, is there any uh, such thing that we can approach at master level? No, madam. Until that, um, unless whether the professor is having any other funding, they can give that any uh, assistantship, uh, research assistantship they can give. But in this government is concerned, they, they are not offering any uh, scholarship for masters. Um, master level, they are not giving anything. If any professors are having the research funding, they can opt that uh, particular uh, master students to utilize their service. They can give the scholarships as a uh, research assistant. Yes. Mm. Uh, delegates, do you have any another question? You can put in chat box. Okay, so we have not received any question. So I think your okay. session is so informative that uh, there is no chance for any question. Thank you okay, so thank much, you sir, much for enlightening. Uh, uh, wait a minute, sir. We have got one question. So can I take a hand? Okay, madam. Thank you very much for this opportunity. First of all, my apologies for I'm unable to connect this uh, link. Sorry for this. Thing. Thank you. Okay, okay, so we have got one question. What are the most common flaws in research proposal? Most common? Flaws in research proposal. Flaw. You can. Yeah. Uh, flaws in research writing proposals. Huh? I'm not get, not getting that point, madam. Uh, so you can uh, see on screen that is shared already. Okay, just I'll check it out. What 
what are the common flaws in research proposal uh, so open the internet browser flaws means if if you are yes sir uh, sir uh, if the flaws means if the persons who are not uh, uh, making this uh, proposals without any ideas as like that whatever thinking they are writing the proposal the grant will not be given and uh, the literature review they have to up to the up to the date they are submitting this research proposal they have to get this uh, uh, literature review of current status if there is no uh, status of that <coughs> there is it's no importance national importance or any the local importance, the project will be considered as a flaw. They will not at all consider. Okay, sir. No. Uh, another. Uh... Sir, another uh, one of our uh, delegate, uh, Dr. Hitesh Shahare, want to ask you. Like, uh, you have, you need to give more mm -hmm. focus on SERB project. Serb project. Yes, sir. Serb, Serb, no, you are asking Serb project. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Because the time constraints I am one hour for me, one hour time is given. And if another opportunity comes, only the Serb I can talk for two hours also. Definitely, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir. We highly appreciate your comprehensive guidance on preparing okay, research you. proposal and research grant. You have highlighted on various funding agencies okay. for research and development in India, like UGC, ICMR, DST, CSIR, Ayush, DBT, and many more. You also highlighted on the components of research proposal and the foremost very important that you have given us a guideline to write the research proposal and many important part of research proposal is the funds which we have to distribute in various categories. Thank you so much, sir. I assure that after attending your session, thank you. Uh, after attending your session, definitely we are going yeah. to have an extreme beneficial. And now I can assure that after attending your session, the research will no longer be constrained by the lack of funding. So please accept yes, sure. our certificate. Thank you, ma'am. Please accept this virtual certificate okay. as a token of love. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Okay, sir. I will end Thank the you. session now. Okay, madam. I'll stop sharing the slide now.